Hi, everybody. I hope you're doing well, and welcome to the fifth episode of the 10 orchestration techniques series. For those of you who are new to this, don't feel like you have to click away just yet because I'm not really following any specific order. But to sum it up in a few words, what we essentially do here is making variations of the same theme and reorchestrating it in a few styles. So here's what the first version sounded like. This episode was so much fun to write and I'm really looking forward to show you what I did. So let's jump in with number 41. As always, I decided to start with something nice and simple to warm you up, and I've changed the time signature from 4-4 four, four to 3-4 to add a bit of rhythmic variety to our bag of tricks. And for this example, we got cellos and solo French horn on the melody. Trombones are accompanying the melody with the rhythm, and in terms of harmony, I'm using suspended chords over an ascending bass line on bass and timpani. The rest of the strings play eights, spiccatas, filling out the gaps in between the chords. And finally, we have a couple of percussion accents at the beginning and end, and the harp glitch just to set the vibe. All right, let's move to the next one, number 42. I can't believe we have done so many different variations and I didn't think about doing something with piano forward until now, so here it is. So this is a very, very common sound in movies and Alan Silvestri used this particular device for at least three big blockbusters. Let me know in the comments if you know what I'm talking about. And I simply had to cover it because it can be very powerful in the right context. The accompaniment is quite sparse at the beginning with only violins, then building with the rest of the orchestra on the last phrase. So here's the strings on their own. We have high woods doubling the melody and playing harmonies in the higher register. Trombones and bassoons are basically doubling cellos and violas in unison with this line that works in contrary motion to the lead melody. Additionally, I've added a short counter phrase um, that ends on the ninth of the chord on French horns, while uh, percussion is doing the usual swelling and accenting. Cool, let's play everything together. Number 43. I wanted this example to sound unstable, hence the odd 7-4 time signature and the extreme low registers on flutes and clarinets playing 
closely voiced minor trades. The harmony consists in two minor chords of a pedal tune. In the background we have an interesting texture made of a combination of different things, Celeste on this fast arpeggio, violin harmonics giving it an eerie sound, and harp clashing against it playing bisbigliando, which is basically a tremolo. We have bassoons and contrabassoons uh, two octaves apart on the pedal tone that we mentioned before. And finally, the example ends with oboes and English horn doubled by flutes, a third below. Alright, let's have a look to the next one. I feel like brass in general have been a little bit underrepresented throughout the series, so I wanted to show you where they really shine, which in my opinion of course is in these loud fanfarish gestures and closely voiced chords in the middle register. So we start with French horn, tuba and bass trombone playing the melody two octaves apart. We have tenor trombones and trumpets on the second bar, building to a resolution chord. After this, trumpets quickly take over the melody, doubled by flute and oboe, just to make the top line pop a little more, while French horns play the chords. And just like before, I've used low brass for the build-up. Outside the brass section, we have basses and cellos in octaves to reinforce the harmony, but also timpani for accents along with some cymbal swells. Also, you'd know by now I like to use bells and glocked to make the brass resonate and give it more of a bell-like sound, so that's what I'm doing here. That's it, let's take it from the top. For the following two examples, I was trying an ethnic kind of vibe, so let's have a listen to those. This is quite obviously trying to recreate a Middle Eastern kind of vibe. Now, before I get a lot of backlash for what I just said, I'm perfectly aware that this sounded nothing like actual music from Arabia or something, but this is more like an impression of the Middle Eastern sound in Hollywood that very often tends to have a very narrow set of rules. For example, the harmony I'm using here makes use of the Phrygian dominant scale. What in the world is that, you ask? I'm gonna try to explain it now. So, the Phrygian dominant scale is most commonly seen as the fifth mode of the harmonic minor scale, or in other words, it's a harmonic minor played from its fifth degree. 
Its peculiar sound is given by the augmented step between the second and third degree of the scale, essentially making it a Phrygian but with a major third rather than minor, hence its name Phrygian dominant. Some of the most commonly used chords derived from the scale are major on the first and second degree, diminished on the third and fifth, and minor on the seventh degree. But more relevant to our example, this is how I adapted this harmonic vocabulary to the theme. Getting back to the orchestration, the very first thing I did was essentially building up a group with some ethnic drums called djembes. In this type of music, you usually find hammer dulcimers or some sort of variation of that. So that's what I'm doing too. Doubled at the octave by a small harp and cutas for accents. I didn't want the accompaniment to sound too thick at this point, so I've used some rather soft sounds like pits on low strings and violins con sordino on the top. We also have French horns on the chords. They are very much in the background and not very noticeable, but I felt like the harmony was lacking a bit of clarity at this point, and they were good candidates for help. And just for fun, I added a couple of woodwind lines in the empty spaces and harp glitz at the very beginning. Number 46. Okay, this is a more modern take on the previous example. I'm using a very similar kind of percussion ensemble, but with added tambourine, shaker, and acoustic guitar. Let's have a listen to that. Similarly to 45, I'm using one of the major modes from the harmonic minor scale, with the melody going up and down the Lydian dominant scale. On basses and cellos, we have essentially a pedal tune with violins holding a fifth on the top. We have some big stabs on low brass and percussion, and the melody is now on choir and French horns playing fortissimo. This is meant to be very loud, and I, I wish I had a 12 horns patch, but this is what we got. The rest of the accompaniments is carried by flutes and clarinets. And finally, I've used the hammered dulcimers again to fill in the gaps with a couple of counter lines. Cool, let's play everything together. Number 47. 
number 47. For this one, I borrowed quite heavily from Bartok. This shouldn't take too long, hopefully, because I think it's quite straightforward. But let's talk about it. So for this one, the melody is lying hidden deep under those bassoons played by harpsichord and harp. I had chosen harpsichord because this example to me has a bit of a quirky sound and that helps to reinforce that quality. The bassoons I just mentioned are playing short notes very high in the registers in minor sixth intervals which gives them a very peculiar sort of resonance. Triangle and Glock are accentuating the trills we have on bassoons. And string pits are playing some accents, filling out the harmony with some minor chords. See, I told you that was easy. So let's listen to it again. With this example, I was experimenting with this made-up scale built from these two chords, D minor and F sharp major. I think it's an interesting concept to toy with, particularly because there is so much unexplored territory and you can get very creative building up scales with any combination of chords. What I like about this particular scale is these two melodic cells built with the very same intervals and I've used those to lay down an ostinato on violins and violas. We have cellos and basses two octaves apart, creating a bed for the rest of the orchestra. And just to give you some context, here's what the strings sound like all together. Two but doubles the basses, and we have bass trombone together with timpani on B2 and 4. Percussions complement the groove with bass drum on beat 1 and 3, and snares essentially mirroring the same rhythm that we have on violins and violas. The melody is now taken by all woodwinds playing in unison at the same register. I'm not entirely happy with the way this sounds in my mock-up, particularly because of some balance issues. In that register we should really be getting a lot more of bassoons and obers, but I wasn't quite able to appro approximate it with what I have at the moment. That said, let's take a listen. <laughs> Let's play everything together. Number 49. So at this point, I quite simply realized I hadn't done a woodwind choir yet, so I had to get it out of the way. 
I will show you the orchestration in just a second, but uh, let me first play you a piano reduced version so you can see what is going on harmonically. Similarly to brass, I think I like woodwinds the best when they are playing close voice harmonies, and that's even more true the further away we get from middle C on the piano. So um, for the melody, I've used flutes and oboes harmonized in close triads. In the middle, we have clarinets essentially doubling flutes and oboes an octave apart on the first half and slightly diverting on the second, just for voice leading purposes and balance purposes. As expected, under the clarinets I've used bassoons with wider intervals between each other in order to not muddy up the orchestration too much. And finally, harp arpeggios. It wasn't really necessary, but I very often use it in this sort of context to add a little bit extra spark on the movement. Great, I'll play everything together and then I'll show you the last one. I think the last examples so far have always been something slightly different from the usual orchestral sound, and I'd like to continue uh, with this habit. For this one, I've tried to replicate the sound of Western and Americana, and as you would, I've used for the melody electric guitars uh, playing with the slide, but also doubled by an opera singer and French horns at the very end. <laughs> The last phrase is also doubled and harmonized by trumpets, playing flatter song and releasing the mutes, creating this weird effect. In the percussion section, we have shaker, tambourine, and bass drum, but we also have some orchestral percussions like timpani rolls and cymbal swells, just to give it a little bit more of a cinematic kind of feel. And we have an acoustic guitar together with more electric guitars and bass for the accompaniment. But before we take a listen to those, I want to show you the piano version of it, just so that you can see what chords I will be playing. Again, just for vibe, I've used a couple of flourishes on harmonica and ocarina just to set the mood. And finally, the example ends with a lick a split between guitars and bass.
This episode was so hard to write, but I'm having so much fun. I'm starting to get a little bit out of my comfort zone here, having to transcribe new music and planning in advance what I will do. But it's great, I'm learning so much by making these videos and I hope you're still enjoying them because I have great plans for the future and we are still only halfway through. Anyways, as always, project files and scores will be available for my patrons. And of course, if you feel like supporting me, please check out the link in the description. Don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe as that, believe it or not, helps a great deal. And if you haven't watched the uh, previous episodes, they will pop out somewhere on the screen in just a few seconds. So that said, thank you very much for watching and see you very soon. Bye.